In this video, I'm gonna share my number one tip with respect to working with layers. Also worth mentioning, I'm pretty sure this is 100% undocumented. And also this is something that I just stumbled across entirely by accident, maybe six months ago or something. So I wanted to share it with you. Let's really quickly talk about the way that Studio One works with layers and the way that it names layers. So as you can see, we have some audio events on the timeline here. Now we don't see the layer icon, which is that icon that has three or four lines in the bottom left-hand corner of the events. So it's worth mentioning that there's no layers on any of these tracks. These are just audio events with one single layer. Now, if I select the track header of any of these, notice that the layer name is automatically appended with one. This is because there is only one layer there and it's just automatically numbered with the number one numerically. Now, if I wanted to, for example, add a layer or duplicate this layer, if we click add layer, notice that it automatically appends two. So we click that and now we have one and we have two with layer two being in focus. So this is the same if I duplicate the layer. It, we have that two and then layer two is brought into focus. So this last year, as in this last 12 months that I've been mixing songs, I've been really happily surprised with the amount of songs that I'm receiving, which as opposed to being mono audio regions or stems, they are actually Studio One songs that people are sending me to mix. Now I always like this because if something is a really good starting point and I need to modify it or I need to fix an edit, for example, it's really easy for me to come in here and say, okay, this edit was maybe a little off or something needs a fade. Okay, but that being said, whenever I do that type of workflow, I always want to leave myself a backup of the original work. For example, if somebody edited this and went through uh, the producer, whoever it was, the artist, that I want to work off of a duplicated layer. So I would always duplicate the track and then basically I'd be working off of layer two. And if I made an adjustment to something and I accidentally made a mistake, I could always go back to layer one. All right, so let me, let's undo this and we'll undo this and maybe one more undo, we'll bring ourselves back to having one layer. Now this is a bit of a pain in the butt to have to do these individually, especially if I forget. Sometimes I'll forget and I'm editing something and I realize that I didn't duplicate the layer first. So what I wanna do is this duplicate layer command over here, which is something that's available as a key command, what I wanna do is basically select all of these and fire off that option. So this can be found and over here, and also if you're not seeing this option over here, make sure that your track height and your range window is pulled out uh, high enough in terms of its vertical zoom level, and you'll be able to see it. And if you don't see it here, just if you have your inspector open and the track is selected, you will also see the layer controls here as well. So going back to this track over here, here is my issue. The default behavior of Studio One when you select multiple tracks and you are trying to rename the layers, or you want it to auto rename the layers with the number two beside. So instead of using this option with mouse clicking, I've mapped out my keyboard shortcuts. So we'll go duplicate. So over here, duplicate layer, I'm using the same key command that Pro Tools use because it's just muscle memory that I have. So this is what I'm using. So I select all these layers, I fire off my key command, automatically gives me the automatic name and I think to myself, okay, no problem, it's got the number two there. So I would go ahead and I would push okay. Now this has created a new layer for all of these tracks, but take a look at what's happened over here. If we take a look at what was used for the name, for example, let's take a look at this one. Layer one is chorus harmony one, a number sign O two one. This is our first layer. What is layer two called? It's called Holly lead vocal O five two. This was the auto name that, that Studio One used for the first track. So this is not what I want. So I'm going to undo this. I'm gonna show you a really cool workaround or feature in that if I wanted to create layers for all of these tracks and I wanted to do it using my key command as opposed to doing them one at a time, I'm just gonna select all these tracks. I'll fire off my key command, but in this case, I'm going to get rid of the automatic name, just pushing the delete key and now I'll push okay. So now Studio One is gonna create a layer for each track, but now take a look at the actual layer names. Now they actually make sense in context to what we were working with. So this one over here, you can see that the actual layer name, it matches the track name and it has the number two appended as opposed to having the number one appended. 
So now this is a way that we can quickly select all of the tracks, make a duplicate and not have it mess up the layer name and have it automatically append the number two. If I wanted to make one more layer, very easy. I'm gonna do the same thing again. And this time I'm just gonna push delete and I'll push okay. And now we're gonna have three layers. If I collapse all these layers, notice now that we have three, but they're all matching in terms of the track name and layer name matching each other. And we have one, two, three. Now, the last thing I would do in order to do this style of editing um, is quite simply, I'm going to select all of these tracks and I'll just use my shift. I'm going to deselect this option for layers follow events. Now notice that that's deselected for everything. And the main reason is because if I'm editing and I move something, I don't want these layers to move, right? If I had this preference enabled, layers follow events, and I was to take this and move it somewhere, I've moved everything else. And I don't want the original tracks that were edited the way the producer or the artist wanted. I don't want those to move at all. So I'm going to click undo. And this is why I make sure that I deselect the layers follows events option. And then very easy for me to make any modifications that I want with respect to working with the layers, making any adjustments, moving them, having the naming system be something that I can trace back in terms of knowing what layer one is versus layer two. And then probably the last thing that I would do, if I'm being honest, is I would right click, I'm gonna head to audio, and I would just create a new clip version because in this case, um, it probably makes the most sense that if I'm doing anything like, for example, if I'm adjusting the clip gain on this, then I wouldn't want this to affect those original edits. So now if I go back to my layer one, then this is unaffected, right? Layer two, we created two layers, but now my layer three, we're working with unique clip versions. So this is my number one tip for working with layers. Make sure that you just delete the automatic name that Studio One puts in, click enter, it will rename them with a number sequentially. And then in addition to that, make sure that your layers follow events is deselected so you're not messing yourself up. And the icing on the cake, of course, is working with a clip version so you're not modifying the original file in the layer one. Everything remains untouched and as the artist or producer left it. That's all the time I have available for today. I will catch you in the next video. Cheers.